Okay, so in this video, what I want to do now is I just want to give you some more exposure to what you can do with DAX and how quickly you can get there. Okay, I might not cover sort of every individual um, nuance to a formula or function, etc., but I just want to give you a really good overview of a few ideas so you can get going and you can explore, you know, the what 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 DAX can achieve for you, and then make a decision to you know dive into it more with our other DAX courses that we, or DAX content that we have um, available through Enterprise DNA. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna delete these two here, and um, I'm gonna bring bring this across to the side, okay? And what I'm gonna do is I'm first going to show you how we can um, branch out even more here and do some time comparison work, okay? Some time comparison analysis. The first thing I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna bring a filter in here for dates. Okay, because you've got to remember that we don't have a filter on date here. So this is just basically looking at every single data point through time. And so I'm just going to turn this into a filter here or a slicer, sorry, um, so that we can, um, and I'm going to get rid of in this field section, I'm going to get rid of this hierarchy. I'm just going to get the date. Okay. And then I want to turn this into, let's have a look, I want to turn this into a different type of um filter just start again actually i'll bring this in get rid of the hierarchy and then turn it into a slicer there we go okay so this is the slicer that i that i want basically i want to be able to filter down to a different time zone and then you'll see that that filtering is changing the results here and the reason why that is is because you just got to think okay well the the context of this Cal all these calculations are changing because I've got a different time frame here and what's happening in the model is that that time frame is being filtered up here in the dates table and then it's flowing down this relationship and it's filtering whatever those dates are in the sales table so we're now looking at a smaller subset of information okay and so what I want to do I'm just going to um, bring this across here I'm going to create a table of my dates I'm going to again get rid of this hierarchy. I'm going to click that drop down and go date. I don't really like that hierarchy. It's ne I've never been a real fan of it. Um, I don't know why they sort of put it there automatically. Um, but another thing I would I would also quickly do is I don't like this date format. So I'll show you something here as well. I'm just going to go over to the um, the tables area, find my dates table, and I'm going to highlight that column. And I'm just going to change the format. I'm going to change the format to this particular format. So now I actually just have the, and, and, and this is how we, we, you know, I know that in different areas of the world you might have this in different orders, but basically this is 1st of July 2019. That's what, it, that's what this is saying. And then I can also go sort ascending and 1st of the 1st 20, 2018. Okay, now. My dates start here because of the filtering that I've got here on my slicer. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in my total sales, right? And now instead of say, seeing sales by customer, we're seeing sales by date. And then what I'm going to do is I want to compare these results here versus results this very same day but the year before. Okay, so we're going to branch out. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new measure and I'm going to call this sales LY for last year. Okay, and I'm going to go and use a function called calculate. Okay, now I'm going to give you this is just me giving you exposure to this calculate function. Okay, because it's going to be brand new to a lot of you. But basically, calculate is going to become your most um, used function in Power BI in the in the DAX formula language. It will most it will, it will without a doubt become your most used because it's the start of any sort of advanced analysis inside of Power BI. So we're doing some. Um, time comparison work here, or time intelligence, right? So calculate um, enables me to what's called change the context of the calculation. Because what happens is I still want to calculate up total sales, so I'm going to branch out my total sales measure here. I still want to calculate up my sales, but I want to cal calculate it up. Sorry, I'll just do that again so we can actually see the description, which is really good. So you see here, evaluates an expression in a context modified by filters. So I still want to count up my total sales, right? But I want to count it up in a different context. I don't want to count it up in this particular context or the context coming from my um, my date column here. I want to calculate it up 
um, by using a function um, that enables me to change the filter. And I can use a function called same period last year, and I can input the dates column like this, right? Push enter. And then all of a sudden I can drag this in. And now we are comparing, so with this particular formula, we are comparing sales on one, um, in one measure here and one measure here, but this particular result has been modified to go and look at the very same day the year prior, the same period last year, okay? And then I can also just change the formatting of this really easily. And so now I'm comparing my results this year in the current context versus my results last year because of the modified context that we have inside of Calculate. And that's because that's what Calculate enables you to do. Okay. And you can do so many different variations of this. You know, this is just the start. Okay. This is the very, very start of what you could do with Calculate and time intelligence functions and measure branching. Okay. So just something to bear bear in mind there. And, you know, Calculate is covered in at length in many videos that have been produced by myself and Enterprise DNA and also in our portal. So it is a very, very, very crucial function to get your mind around very quickly. But the, the key thing to sort of just have going on, uh, repeating in your mind is Calculate enables you to change the context of a calculation, okay? Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you one other example. Um, of creating a cumulative total, okay? And I'm going to call this one cumulative, cumulative sales, okay? And I'm going to come down to a new line here. I'm just going to do a bit of formatting inside of this um, uh, formula bar. I'm going to go calculate, and I still want to calculate total sales, but again, I want to do it in a different context. So I'm putting inside calculate. Then I'm going to go down to a new line here, and I'm going to create use a function called filter. Then I'm going to use a function called all selected, and then I'm going to put the dates table. Then I'm going to put the date column here is less than or equal to max date. And then I'm just going to go enter. Okay. Then I'm going to drag this into my table here. I'm going to change the format, and then we're going to go over the formula. Now, what I want to do here is I just want to show you in a visualization what this looks like so you can get a better visual of it at the same time. Okay. Get rid of total sales there. So you see I can change around the context here and everything will update automatically for me. Okay, so here's another example. Measure branching. We're, measure, we're, we're branching into a sort of cumulative subset of calculations, right? And what I've done here, as I've said, okay, I want to count up total, total sales at every single result here. But what I want to do is I want to change the context of it. And so what's basically happening for every individual result here in this table that we're looking at, what's happening is the formula is saying, Calculate up the sales, but calculate up every sales on this day and every prior day at the same time. Accumulate them all up. So it's coming across to here, and it's basically counting all those up. Then it comes down to this line, and it's basically counting all those up. And that's what this part of the formula is doing. This is what the um, modify this this with this formula sort of combination here. We're modifying the context of the calculation. Okay within Calculate in this particular way, and this formula does it dynamically for us, okay? Now, as I, as I said, I don't want to um, go too deep into what these individual functions do, because they are covered elsewhere, um, and, and it's not sort of, I, I don't want to, um, you know, go too technical on these things um, and confusing you at this early stage, at this beginner's guide, guide stage, okay? But I just, you know, this is, as I said, it's just about giving you exposure so you know that, you know, this is possible and it's possible quite quickly too, if you just get your mind around these sort of things. And the, the, the other thing, just a quickly note, is they're all, di these are all dynamic, right? These are all dynamic. So not only do they change based on, say, some date context that we might change here, but say, for instance, we want to look at a specific customer. It will then update, all of our formulas will update for that specific customer. All of these formulas are built in a way that they are going to work 
um, seamlessly with the model that we have created. All of the additional filters can be layered on top of each other to create, um, we can even multi-select if we want, to create um, you know, uh, dynamic calculations. So you see here we can see just by holding down control and selecting multiple rows, you know, how, how sort of a group, a grouping of customers have performed even. One last thing that I would do is that when we go and move away from sort of our key measures and we move into sort of more branches of measures, what I would ordinarily do is start creating new measure groups for these, okay? So I would come up and go enter data and um, I would go, I would call this sort of cumulative, cumulative measures. I'll just go quickly load and then and you, I can do this pretty quick, you know, and you you would you will be able to as well. Um, I'm going to just quickly create another one here, and call this one um, time com time time comparison. Okay, and so those are now appearing in our our field section here. Um, they'll also appear over here so what we need to do is we want to just line them up i'll just quickly do that so that they're not sort of just everywhere in our model we want to just keep this really nice and tidy and then all we need to do is move these in so i'm going to change this cumulative sales into my cumulative measures um, i'll also grab my sales last year i'm going to move that into my time comparison Right, and then I'm just going to delete these columns. So delete one. Right, and then come down here and delete this one. And then I just got to click this in and out. And you see now that we have three. Uh, measure groups very quickly easy to reference measures inside of each one and this will grow this will grow and grow and grow because not only can we measure branch say sales say we wanted to compare our profits or even our profit margins or anything like that we could then insert that particular measure inside of here and we would get very different calculations quite quickly okay so i think i want to round off the the dax um section here for this particular um, course uh, because I think we've covered enough from a, from a beginner's point of view and we'll move on to start creating some of our visualizations. In no way are we finished creating DAX in, um, at, at, at all. You know, as we're creating our visualization, we might have to um, you know, adjust a few things, go find a different insight that we don't have um, already. And that, will, that is very common and will, and will always occur. Um, you know what I do personally when I build things up is I always just try and grab okay what are the what are the quick wins what are the quick measures the easy key measures I can create really really quickly before I generate any visualization once I get those set up I can start mocking things up and then I can jump back and quickly create other measures if I want some other piece of analysis that I don't currently have and that's exactly what we'll plan to do in the next section and we'll quickly you know try and whip up a nice dashboard a nice report um, and you know, see if it extracts some insight, um, some valuable insight that you know could be useful within a business. Okay, let's let's jump into that now.